a confession to make. I have once been a strong advocate of money. I have both witnessed and experienced myself how money changes things that shouldn't have changed and tarnished values that we cherish. So this is going to my reflection on my change of view, on how, how, on, on how I found out the things that money can change, despite all things that were invaded. Let's start with love. We all perceive love to be sacred, don't we? We tend to believe that love will never be swayed by external circumstances. Romeo and Juliet even, do even show us that love is the ever more pure and eternal value, don't they? Nevertheless, we see too many cases where men, men, men and women would fall for oath and call it love. Then you will tell me about loyalty. But ladies and gentlemen, even loyalty oftentimes accompanies money, and some snobbish people will be more than happy to forsake that value just to get a sip of what power tastes like. Think about Judas, the archetype of traitor who sold off Jesus and his loyalty for only 30 silver coins. And of course, we cannot skip over the value of challenger, can we? We more often win this rich kids whose parents send them to expensive leadership camps so that they can face challenge, suffer, learn, and write another, another line in the resume. I've also personally experienced myself how education and its value could be easily purchased. Two years ago, I participated in a school debate competition. My debate, my debate teammates and I prepared by ourselves after class, assiduously spending hours in the library, digging our research papers and building cases. Only then did we realize that other teams had been tutored by a debate coach. And guess what? All four teams who broke in the elimination rounds had been tutored. Obvious mathematics working here. You and your parents invest money for education, and as a result, you get to win prizes. Not to blame anybody, it's just that that's how money works. And that's when I realized that money may not be buying your way out in forms of bribery at school, but that it does allow kids who pay for private lessons get ahead of students like me who studied alone. At that point, no value seemed invincible against the might of money. However, I thought to myself that there must be an exception. And I thought that exception is time. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever seen anyone who bought time with money? Can you come up with anyone who succeeded in buying eternity or immortality throughout the course of history? No, there's not a single person. Not even the most powerful leader was ever able to bribe time. As the famous French poet Baudelaire once said, you would strive not to feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders and crushing you to the earth. In other words, no man can ever fend off time, not even with the almighty money. Ladies and gentlemen, there would have been millions of times where you wished you could buy time. Yet, money can't save you from the ticking bombs on your bed shelf, nor buy you more time before the assignment deadline ends. It cannot stop our grandmothers from growing, aging moment by moment, nor stop daughters from growing and slipping through our fingers. And that is precisely the reason why recognizing the fact that money cannot buy time is so important. Because only when we start facing the truth that we are all equal in the amount of time given to us, can we finally stop attempting to buy things that shouldn't be encroached by money. The moment you realize that you cannot carry a single penny to wherever you're going after death, is when you also realize that the things you obsessively try to buy are only momentary. You realize that you should ponder upon how to spend the limited time granted to you in the most valuable manner as possible. This realization is what motivates us to not spend money on non-market values, such as love, loyalty, and challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, you should have spent more time with your friends and lovers without calculation. You should have lived the moment instead of postponing things to tomorrow as if today didn't mean anything to you. That's the true meaning of what money can't buy, and that's the way we should live our lives. So let's get back to my story. The kids who made it to the top four teams may have won prizes, and prizes may mean more than a story of failure when it comes to college admission. Yet, <coughs> I'm not regretful for that matter. I learned more in the stuffy library, working on my own, doing something that others cannot and should not do for me. That time where my teammates and I were all alone was what made us who we are. Every minute constructed who we are, and money had no grip over it. Our incapability to buy time may make us mortal. But ironically, that's what makes our life so beautiful and so precious. 
Money can't buy time. Money can't buy a ticket to immortality. With that thought in mind, let us savor all moments as they are. Believe in truth that money actually doesn't shape who you are, whom you love, what challenges you should face. Because every unviable moment of your life will be a meaningful challenge for you. Thank you.